Alright, hello everyone, and welcome to episode one of Star Trek Mata Hari. For those that are unfamiliar or joining us for the first time, Mata Hari is a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set by Modifius Entertainment. Specifically, we are set in 2411 aboard an Eclipse class in the Shackleton Expanse. If you watch my Fenrir game, then we are in the same canon, quote-unquote, as that game. Now, you don't need to have watched Fenrir to enjoy Mata Hari, but you might catch a few references and subtle nods if you do. You can catch the VODs for both Mata Hari and Fenrir on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. I really only have one other thing to say before we do introductions and then do the intro. Uh, specifically, that I greatly appreciate whatever support you provide to the stream, whether it's Follow, sub, donation, bits, talking in chat, whatever. It's all greatly appreciated. Just remember to take care of yourselves first. And with that said, let's go around and have everyone introduce themselves and their characters. So let's start with our captain. Hello, I am Charles Wolf, also known as Dare Wolf. I am playing Captain Malik Jovan. Alrighty, up next we have Mr. Jaro. Hey, I'm Nikhil, and I play uh, Commander Jaro Rian, the first officer. Mr. Jennings. Hey, I'm Mike, and I play uh, Mr. Tave Jennings, the Romulan security guard. Mr. Prawl. Hello, everyone. I'm Alex. I play Lieutenant Commander Prawl, the ship's intelligence officer. Mr. Jensen. Hi, I'm Jeff, and I play uh, Lieutenant Commander Jensen, the science officer. And last but not least, Mr. Tolep. I'm Brian, and I play uh, Lieutenant Commander Jimmer Tolep, the Rigelian chief engineer. Very nice. And with that, let's go ahead and run the intro. Welcome back, everyone. So if you're not familiar with what I do on my channel is every time we have a Star Trek game in particular, I have one of the players do sort of a captain's log or a security officer's log. And tonight, Mr. Prawl has that honor. So Mr. Prawl, if you would take it away. Lieutenant Commander Prawl's personal log, Stardate 88673.2. It would seem life aboard the Matahari is finding its rhythm after being out of dock for only a short while. Most of the crew seems to work well with one another, though I have noticed some hesitancy among some of the older members of crew when their duty stations bring them to work in my vicinity. From what I've checked on, these crewmen are veterans of the Dominion War. While this is not my first instance that I've dealt with, I don't hold any ill will towards them. The life pod that we were able to bring aboard from the alien vessel thus far remains sealed. I have taken some liberty with my position in Starfleet Intelligence to do some research through the archives for any similar occurrences. I have been able to locate a couple records from the USS Arcadia that had been previously classified. Given the situation that we're facing, I've requested a meeting with Captain Jovan to inform him of my findings. On a personal note, it has been four years since my last posting for a starship, the USS Wayfarer. I missed the hum of the deck plates while at warp. However, I did not miss the faulty replicators. Thankfully, engineering was able to correct those. If I had to eat one more plate of goth, I was going to detonate the warp core myself. End of log. 
All right. So, as he has alluded to in his log, we are going to start with him specifically knocking, well, I guess not knocking, beeping at your door, Captain. Enter. And in steps Mr. Prawl. Lieutenant Commander Prawl, good to see you. I heard you wanted to speak with me. Yes, Captain. I took the liberty of looking into any previous instances towards what we were initially dispatched for, for this neutronium vessel. What have you discovered? There were some paralogs that I found. They are classified. I don't know if you want to inform the rest of the senior staff or if I should leave it with just you. Well, let's start with uh, telling me what you found and we can take it from there. Yes, sir. The logs that I've encountered seem to be as best I can gather related to some alien that the USS Arcadia came across. I believe if the records were correct, she was known as Andromeda. What do you know about this or what have you discovered? I'm not familiar with this species. From what I could piece together from the logs, she arrived here from the Andromeda galaxy. Wait, this is a species from another galaxy? That is what I found is leading me to believe. Interesting. What else did the classified logs that you were able to uncover reveal? Anything about their disposition? Anything else we know about this species? The little bits I was able to piece together, she was able to survive her journey here, apparently through the galactic barrier, thanks to some symbiotic bio suit that she possessed. For the time being, I would like to keep this between you and me. I believe it would cause a murmur or stir amongst the crew of which I don't wish to deal with at this time. With that being said, with that being yes, said, I owe you a glass of red wine. So uh, replicator, two sweet red wines. The replicator hums to life and materializing is the start of what you want. So two wine glasses filled with a red liquid. However, right as the materialization process begins to finalize, it shorts out and there's kind of a glitch, like a sort of sound, and the glasses shatter and just spill wine all over your carpet. I'll get back to you. You're dismissed. Sure. <laughs> Walk right out. All right. Um, I'm going to take just a few minutes to review the logs that he brought in, see if I can gather any more information, and then I'll return to the bridge. Okay. So while Prawl is uh, going back out onto the bridge, uh, Captain, why don't you roll me an insight and a command at a difficulty of, let's, let's call it a difficulty of one. And I almost forgot to push that button, which gives us nice bridge ambience. Uh, do I have a focus? Uh, let's take a look. I've got diplomacy, home operations, starship recognition, warp engines, and small craft. I would say diplomacy would apply here. Yeah. All right. Two successes. So that is two successes. You get one momentum. So you're looking at the logs, and sure enough, uh, what he says is true. Andromeda did come through the galactic barrier from the Andromeda galaxy. What he omitted to say, or perhaps what you were discovering reading these logs is that her home, the Andromeda Galaxy, there was a Starfleet mission to take her home. And part of that process was the ship in question, the USS Adiona. They encountered a species known as the Muat. And the Muat were the ones that had neutronium alloy vessels, not unlike the ones you found the casket in. Okay. Now, the catch here is that the Muat worshipped Andromeda's species, the Dorni, as gods. Oh. Which kind of brings you to the conclusion or the question, if you have another Dorni here, why are they here to begin with? Shouldn't they be 
in another galaxy. But that's what, what you learn. What is she doing here? First officer, Jarl, please meet me in my ready room. Sure thing, on my way. All right. So, Jaro, you step oh. on into the office. Yep. Uh, Commander Jaro, um, I'm going to send him, like, I'm going to show him the documentation and the research that we've been, uh, that we've just discussed. And I'm going to inform my first officer of the situation. And um, I would like your opinion, uh, Rayon, um, as to what, as to what you think we should do with us. Do we, do we know why Andromeda originally came to our galaxy, what her purpose was. Jaro, okay. let's have you roll me an insight command. All right. Also, yes, hello, Twitch. I see some of you have appeared in chat. Thank you for tuning in. Um, do I have a focus that applies? Uh, let's take a look. Uh, yes, you would. Okay, cool. Uh, one more die we need, because it's two to start with, so we need one more roll. Oh, sorry about that. You have failed us for the last time. Okay. <laughs> uh, failure, yes. There hey, look at that, a crit. So uh, you get two momentum. So Whoa. what you glean, Mr. Jaro, is that Andromeda, her travel to the Milky Way was quite by accident she when she was awakened uh she had amnesia uh had no idea who she was or what her species did um but what you do sort of glean is that her species the dorney are extremely advanced medically uh if i were to use an example um andromeda that you're reading in the log she was a farmer like literally agricultural farming. But her medical knowledge was so advanced that she was able to perform procedures and other such sort of medical wonders that the Daystrom Institute was almost like hounding her to let them study her. But that's what you learn. I don't know if that particular answers your question, but that's what you learn. Is okay. there anything in the logs about, you know, Starfleet was obviously trying to help her get home? It was that the mandate? Was that what they were recommending? That um, was the entire mission of the Adiona was to take her home. Was to take her home. Okay. What I, do you think, Commander? I I would like to, to hear from this individual, actually, as to why they, um, as to why they made such a trip mm -hmm. out here. It seems like based on the data that she was here simply by accident and she didn't really know why, as it mentions, she had amnesia. Although I think it would be in our best interest to perhaps awaken her yeah, um, and or talk to her at least and see if we can help her home. It appears that's what Starfleet had mandated and she seems to be a, uh, a person out of time and space. So if we can get her home, that seems like yeah. something we should do. Would you concur? Yes, and so to be clear, the the person we have in our possession is not necessarily Andromeda herself. Oh, it's, it's not. It, it's, it's one of her species. So another one. Ooh, fascinating. So um, we don't quite know if they're here by accident or if they made a very dangerous strip out here for a specific reason. But it stands to reason that this species is, is, is at least, seems like they're, they're friendly or mm -hmm. we're on friendly terms with them. So I don't necessarily see a problem with um, awakening them and seeing what they have to do. It is one of the Starfleet mandates to explore strange new worlds and discover new life. Mm -hmm. I think we should discover some new life. Um, gather the, uh, get someone from medical. Uh, let's go to the security pod and uh, let's open it up and see if we can welcome our new friend aboard the uh, Matahari. Sure, might I suggest um, we bring the chief intelligence officer as well? I would have thought the same thing. I think that's an excellent idea. So uh, what I'm hearing is party in the science lab. Party in the science lab. <laughs> All about the shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Security officer, yep. uh, intelligence officer, please meet us in the C science lab. And I'll push, move our way there. Yep. And I uh, will get your tokens on there. We'll shoulder dance over to the science lab. 
But yeah. Uh, yes. Literally... See, he gets it. He gets it. We're yeah. shoulder dancing. That's what we do on the Mata Heart. We shoulder dance. I love it. So everyone is there because this is a uh, momentous occasion that is going to require all talents. Wow. And as you step into the science lab, uh, I don't think we've been on this set before. At least I don't remember if we did in session zero, but we did not. Um, the science lab of the Matahari, the main science lab, is expansive. Um, it is almost at the size that one would expect of a star base, which means that you not only have uh, large sort of quarantine fields and containers, you have a variety of scientific equipment there. Uh, you have haptic displays and holographic displays that allow you to not only touch, but also sort of do the air thing that we see in Picard. Um, but relevant for all of you is that seated in uh, a container, the casket that you retrieved, uh, behind a quarantine field is the pod of what is potentially a Dorney. And as you all come in, um, I'm curious because I believe Mr. Jensen, um, would it be fair for me to say that you and uh, uh, our chief engineer, Mr. Tulip, um, would you two have been doing your best to see what you can discern of the casket? Uh, yes. Uh, based on my focus of xenobiology, I probably would have been very interested. Okay. So what we're going to call here, and I'm going to let uh, you and Toleop work it out, but one of you is going to be assisting the other. Uh, our science, if you have our science officer role, you're going to be doing a reason science. If Mr. Toleop is rolling, he is rolling a reason engineering. The difficulty on this is a three. So you may wish to spend momentum. You can have uh, the momentum. I have the one if you want to spend it. Okay. Uh... Toleop, uh, thoughts? Well, uh, my reason's 11 and my engineering is 5. <clears throat> presuming, I've got, the, I've got yeah. the same, so... This seems like your ballywick. I'll assist you. Okay. Let's just say, uh, let's this see. is more of a side. Do you want to spend the momentum? Uh, I, I think it's probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, Boom. done. So reason, and then science. Submit. So that's going to give us three and xenobiology would apply here. Most definitely. Good. Three successes already, but let's see that assist. Get that momentum back. Let's go. So, um, can I apply? No, I don't have any focuses. Never mind. <laughs> Hey, you still get a success. You get that momentum right back. So what you two learn by putting your heads together is that the casket is actually fairly user-friendly, or as user-friendly as you can get. Uh, there's two buttons. There is a green button and a blue button. And you're pretty sure if you push the blue button, it will release the occupant inside. All right. So I assume everybody's here, so... Inform the captain oh. of, of what we've discovered about this wonderful casket. Uh, we kind of have the basic operations, and uh, pushing this button right here will open her up. You know anything else about the uh, the uh, person inside? That's a good question. Have any scans re revealed anything about the occupant? Uh, if you give me... Oh, wait, you're the science officer. You get a free yeah. question. Yeah. So, uh, what you are able to detect inside is one humanoid. Um, Captain, would it be for, fair for me to say that you've told everyone about the Dorney? And... Yes, I would have informed everyone at this point. I feel it's good to let everyone know. I mean, at this point, it, it seems like it's not a, uh, a security breach. Let everybody know. Okay. So, what you know is that there is a Dorney occupant inside. Uh, it is a little bit difficult to get past their bio suit. Um, but as far as you're able to tell, their life signs are stable, solid. They're just sort of in a, uh, a slumber, a deep sleep. Seems to sound, uh, so as far as we can tell, it's, uh, there are life signs inside of a Dorney and, uh, it appears to be stable just in some kind of hibernated state. Which button was the one that you said opened it? The blue one. Beep. Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I click it. 
Okay. Oh. Captain. Uh... <laughs> so as Jennings goes like, nah, 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 you push the button and the casket, almost like uh, I'm using references tonight. If any of you remember playing Halo, you know the hushed casket that Master Chief is in. Uh, mm -hmm. It is almost like a uh, 45 degree cylinder. The cover of it lifts up. And there's sort of a release of gas inside, a little bit of ambiance fog, if you will. Yes, Jennings. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not waiting for all this. In the middle of this, I'm erecting a force field around this scenario. Good call. Uh, so as the force field uh, envelops this and contains the gases, uh, what you see inside is indeed a strange individual. And I actually have a handout for this. So uh, I will show this should show it to everyone and I will large it on the stream. Uh, but for those who can't look right. at a screen because you're listening on a podcast version, uh, if you will imagine a uh, standard humanoid, two legs, two arms, uh, they are very, uh, I would say, lithe, and they have a interesting bio suit. Now, if you've never really seen a bio suit before, um, a good example would be Warframe, uh, where uh, the suit literally is... I don't want to say skin tight, but it is very form fitting. And this bio suit in particular has an angled uh, sort of helmet that comes together in a triangle like visor. Uh, the shoulders are pronounced. They have these protrusions, not only on the shoulders, but every so often along the arms and the uh, legs. And the colors of the suit are white and a gray with these red accents. And as the process stops, as the casket fully opens, uh, the occupant inside does not move. They remain stationary inside the pod. Hmm. Uh, uh, science? <laughs> see. Uh, I assume I can scan for a little scan to do a medical scan of some sort you certainly can uh roll me a reason medicine a difficulty of two and would my xenobiology apply here oh yeah most definitely look at that another three successes another point of momentum for you so it occurs to you that after the captain has told you about the Dorney, uh, one thing that is missing, quote unquote, from the equation is that Andromeda was originally awakened by an infusion of warp plasma. So you just need to hook whoever this is up to an EPS conduit. Uh, so I'm going to, so apparently we are going to need a, a conduit of warp plasma. Ooh. Is that, is that dangerous? Engineering? I mean, it would be dangerous for one of us, but with that suit, I think we might be all right. If the engine. All right. So I'm going to look for a panel to grab a an EPS con uh, conduit and then get the cable plugged into it. And yeah, and I would say uh, the only catch here is that Jennings does have a force field up. So my question is. Jennings, what are the security procedures around this event? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Might I recommend, Jennings, we uh, erect a level three force field around this, um, and we have uh, someone lock on to the pod uh, this this with a uh, transporter lock, so in case something does go wrong, we can transport it off the ship. Sounds good. I meant that out of character, not the oh. character responding. We'll say that that's you communicate the same thing to the captain. Sure. sure. It's okay. Everybody gets their first first session jitters. It happens. <laughs> All right. So, Mister Tolayup, I need you to roll me a daring engineering to feed the EPS conduit into. Uh, the bio suit of this individual. Uh, the difficulty on this, I'm going to spend a little bit of threat here. The difficulty is going to be a four. Oof. I would spend uh, some. Will my fusion sure. reactor focus help me? I say it would. Yeah. Uh, and we just, we decided we wanted to spend 
can, can I spend some momentum? Is the, uh... I would say yes. Now the yeah, question yeah. is, how much momentum are you spending? Is a reminder is four. Uh, to get four dice, it would require all your momentum. Right. Um. What do we think? Do it. All right. Worth let's it. Spend it all. Okay, three successes. Uh, do you have cautious engineering by chance? It would be a talent. Uh, I do not. However, uh, whenever so because I'm uh, Rigelian who has exosex, uh, whenever attempting a task using fitness or daring, roll one additional d20 and gain a bonus momentum on such tasks. Oh, well, that could be very helpful here. All right, so I will roll an additional d20. Daring. I mean, I believe. Engineering. One d20. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. So we have a complication here, and that means things get interesting. Uh-oh. So, to lay up, you take the conduit out, you feed it through the force field to the bio suit. You begin feeding power through. Everything starts to look fine. However, after about maybe 15 seconds, you notice that the power draw is getting exponentially larger to the point that the entire science lab, the lights begin to dim, the, the life support begins to malfunction, it is pulling an enormous amount of power into this bio suit. Hmm. Pull up to main engineering. Uh, this is Martinez, sir. Go ahead. Shut down power to science lab one, please. Sir, the reactor is not responding. It It's locked open, sir. Hmm. Captain, permission to hard lock the power from the science lab. Mission granted. Martinez, engage hard lock authorization to layup one. And there is silence as Martinez attempts this. Then he comes back and says, Sir... I don't know how to tell you this, but nothing's working. And it is at that point that, Mr. Jennings, I would like you to roll me a insight and a security, please. Difficulty of one. Does that mean 1d20 or is it still two? It's still two. And you would have a focus for this one. Hand phasers? Uh, yes, actually. That would okay. be a relevant focus for what's about to happen. All right. Oh, another complication. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. No. <laughs> so I'm going to say, Jennings, you realize this far too late to do anything about it. But when the hard lock engages, quote unquote... It doesn't cut power to the science lab. Instead, more power flows in and force fields erect on the doors like douche, douche, douche. So all the doors are now force fielded. Making matters worse, the replicators begin to hum to life. And if you remember that one episode of DS9 where it literally replicated a phaser-like device on uh, in DS9's ops... That's what's coming out of every single replicator is a phaser-like device. And I'm going to say with that complication, Jennings, that I get one free attack to see if any of this phaser hits you. Well, not you, you, but like you as a group kind of a thing. Okay. Oh, crap. 
So this this could be very bad, or this could go very comically wrong. We'll find out very quickly. So let's see. That's going to be 2d20. Oh, dear. So one of the materialized weapons fires out a wide beam shot that hits all of you. Oh God. And okay. I would like everybody to take two stress worth of damage. Uh, now, if you are on your sheet, you can use the bubbles. Or if you're using the tokens, uh, you can uh, just put in two or subtract two, as long as you know which way you're going. Now, as this phaser fire fires off, we are going to enter into somewhat structured combat here. Um, I would say that all of you, unless said otherwise, uh, you do have your own hand phasers on you. And you do have consoles you can hide behind and things of that nature. But you have about three or four, let's say three, of these phaser weapons that are just firing indiscriminately at anything that moves within the science lab. So again, this is our first experience with any kind of combat. So the way it works, you guys get to go, then the enemy goes, then it's you guys, back and forth until everyone's gone. There is no turn order, so you can decide which among you goes first. It doesn't have to be the same person. I have an idea for something I'd like to try, cool. if everyone's okay with that. Yes. Yeah, yes. How about you tell us what the it. idea is first? <laughs> Okay, with that, I am going to try and get behind a console away from the EPS conduit that is currently drawing power mm -hmm. and fire at it with my phaser. At the conduit? At the conduit. Oh, okay. No. So oh, I need dear. you to roll me a control and a security. The difficulty is a two, but I'm going to say I'm going to spend some threat to make the complication range a 17 to 20. And the reason for that is you taking a shot at the EPS conduit will temporarily expose you to one of the phasers that is just sort of firing every which way. Do we have any momentum currently? Uh, no, you should have no momentum right now. And I have a focus in handheld phasers. That would apply. And look at that, you get four successes, so that's two momentum. Yeah. So I would like you to roll me now, what is your security score? A five. I'd like five. you to roll me eight challenge dice, please. Eight. And with 10, that is more than sufficient. Uh, you take a masterful sort of dodge roll behind a console, uh, aim with your phaser, fire, the beam lances out, hits the EPS conduit where it merges with the wall. Uh, there's a shower of sparks, uh, maybe even a little bit of flame, as the conduit neatly severs. And almost immediately, the uh, lights flicker, then come back to their full light. The phaser fire stops, and everything returns to normal. As you can see, combat goes very quickly when things go right. So you're already out of combat. Easy. Let's well not done. do that again. Well done, Yay. intelligence officer. <laughs> well done, commander. <laughs> I suggest we don't try that again. No. <laughs> now, Mr. Jennings, so since you... I'm trying to figure out how to say this. You could tell, and I'm going to let this happen without a roll. Uh, you could tell that... This was not a standard security procedure. Something triggered the formation of these phaser weaponries to fire on you. This is not normal. Yep. I assume it's the creature. Could be. Do you know if, if this was a conscious... Was this a motivated attack on us? Was it a subconscious attack? Like a defense mechanism? Was it was it was it was it an accident or was it a motivated attack on us? I guess. Is my question. Um, out of character. Who am I actually being spoken to here? Or yeah, yeah. Are you guys just like helping me out, like out of character? 
Oh no, I'm 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 actually like asking that question in character. I would say it's more of a reflex than anything. Hmm. Like probably self-conscious, but I don't. I, I couldn't tell you. I tell you what, if you give me a momentum, I will tell you. Everybody? Yeah, spend the momentum. Yeah. Let's do it. Sure. All right. So, Mr. Jennings, this isn't related to the creature at all. This is, I hate to call it an Easter egg, but this is almost like a malicious program or some form of uh, security procedure gone wrong. Someone planted this. Okay, well, I'll tell the captain that right away. I... So someone planted a procedure to try and kill all of us? That's what it seems like. Or someone planted a procedure that if we attempted to perform an operation similar to this, uh, our sure. would turn against us. This occurrence stays between all of us. I do not want this getting out that this has transpired until we can uh, garner more information on to this occurrence. This stays between all of us. Is that understood? Understood. Yes, sir. I have Hi, Cup. Thank you. Um, is the creature awake or is it still sleeping? It's funny you mention that because uh, its head twitches, just a little twitch, but it does ah. move. Oh, boy. <laughs> And uh, as, you know, you wait a little bit longer, they start to move a little bit more, start to come to themselves. They sort of lean up out of the casket, look around, look at their hands. Then they swing their legs out, rise to their full height. They are a good seven and a half feet tall. They look directly at you, Captain. And say, hello. On I behalf am... of the entire Federation uh, and the captain of the Starship Montahari, I'd like to welcome you aboard. Um, hello. <laughs> I am Alethea. Welcome aboard, Alethea. We recovered your pod aboard a uh, alien starship. Um, all of its inhabitants appeared to be deceased um can you tell us what you were doing aboard that vessel there's almost like a subtle sort of inclination of the head again the faceplate is totally opaque so you can't see their actual ex expression so it's only these little subtle things that you're picking up on mm -hmm. but they say i was sent here for a reason but I can't remember what that reason was. And they sort of look around. Starfleet vessel. Okay. Year 2410? 11. 11. Okay, so it took a little bit longer to get here. I apologize. It's... It's maddening. I know I should know something. But it's it's like there's a door in my mind that's keeping me from getting to it. Um, do you require any food or, 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 or rest? Or, or you know, is there anything that we can do for you? Uh, no. The uh, power infusion that, uh, and she looks at Taleop, that your engineer provided was more than sufficient. I, I do apologize for maybe taking a bit much. No apology necessary at all. <laughs> We're glad to hear you're all right. Does the name Andromeda mean anything to you? And there's another subtle head twitch. Yes, she is. She is my sister. Really now? Interesting. Well, um, at this point, um, I... Would If you would not mind, I'd like to have one of our medical officers examine you to make sure you're all right. And uh, Can you think of any reason why someone wouldn't want you to wake up? Hmm. Great question. Puts a hand to the chin. Thanks for a moment. 
I feel like that is connected to something, yes, but it's again locked behind a door. I don't know why. Uh, perhaps the medical scan will reveal more. Let's let's head to medical then. All right. So as some of you begin to pick up the pieces, I imagine to lay up, you're looking at a broken power conduit and just going, well, that's Tuesday evening. <laughs> Uh, as you all are starting to filter out and uh, see Alethea to medical, um, Jaro and Prawl, you both get a chirp on your communicator. Hey, bro. Go ahead. Uh, this is Ambassador Titania. Are we still meeting? Oh, uh, of course. Sorry, there was some, uh, zaniness down on uh in the science lab so uh slipped my mind but i'm i'll yes i'm still on for the meeting yes we are on our way all right and that is where we do a scene transition to a new set piece which i think you all will enjoy quite well so again if you remember from session zero or if this is your uh first time here the Matahari is a little bit special in that it has, shall we say, a very unique layout. And part of that is that you don't have a 10 forward. You don't have a 6 aft. You have what is a fully functional nightclub with the title of Midnight above the door. And it is not only a nightclub, but this is somewhere where you could take guests, somewhere you could show off the majesty of the Federation. It's a happening place, to say the least. Uh, but waiting for you at midnight is a woman uh, that appears to be uh, fairly standout-ish, if that's a word. Uh, she's very unique. And by that I mean a, a few things. Uh, she has sort of a darker complexion. Uh, her hair is this vibrant, almost sea green uh, that comes down in curls that meets her shoulders. Her eyes are unnaturally blue, almost the same color as her hair. And her lips are in the same sort of color as her hair and eyes. Uh, she is currently seated at one of the booths and sort of waves at you two as you come in and says, Ah, oh, Commander, Lieutenant Commander, glad you could join me. Please have a seat. Or some here. It's a pleasure to see you again, Ambassador. Mm -hmm. And she, of course, smiles at each of you, but then looks very directedly at Prawl and says, Have you told the commander what we discussed last time? I was under the impression you didn't want me to say anything. Well, it is at your discretion, and I think he probably has a need to know. <laughs> Well, now I really want to know, but <laughs> but if you want me to leave, I'll leave. And I'll, I look over at Prowl. This is, as you know, Ambassador Titania, I do believe since you are here and he is here, it might be in the best interest for you to inform him yourself. She smiles and says, I had a feeling. He looks directly at you, Jaro, and says, I may look human. I'm not. Are you familiar with the species 8472 or the Undine? I, y yeah, I think, uh, um, well, is that, is that something that is general knowledge? I mean, I have yeah, a you would know. You would okay, know. okay, I give a, a, a bit of a start, um, like, like almost jump out of my chair for a second and then settle down. Um, you're, you're a member of the Undine? That is correct. I am here in an ambassadorial function, much in thanks to a certain Commodore Archuleta. Well, that's quite the diplomatic coup. Let's just say that uh, Mr. Prawl here knows things that he probably should get spreading around at his discretion. And she just looks at you with a... I don't want to say a shit in eating grin, but a go ahead and share, Prawl. Of course. 
But it is at this point, as you are processing all this, right, <laughs> um, that we cut away back to the CIC, where, um, let me ask this, Jennings and Jensen, would you have gone with uh, your new Dorney friend, or would you have returned to the CIC? I probably would have gone with the Dorney. Okay. Uh, I probably would have followed the captain. Okay, so Captain, where were you headed? I was heading to medical with our uh, our new, uh, I don't know, a new person aboard the ship. Okay. <laughs> our visitor. Our visitor, that's the one. <laughs> All right, so in that case, I'm trying to figure out who I have left remaining. Uh, to lay up, where would you have gone? I mean, I was thinking back to main engineering, but if no one else is going to the bridge, the bridge? The bridge, okay. So uh, we'll say that to lay up, you walk in, you are the ranking officer. So you take up the commander's spot. And it's important because as you step in, uh, Ensign Raven, your helm officer, sort of looks up and says, uh, Lu Lieutenant Commander, um, you should take a look at this. Oh, put it on my screen. All right, so projecting above the tactical sort of desk that takes up the center of the CIC is a swirl of light that sort of feeds into itself, and you don't have okay. to roll yeah. to know Are that this both? is a singularity, uh, a quantum singularity, not unlike a black hole. But uh, she points it out and says, we're detecting that, sir. I don't know why it's there or why the computer is telling me that we have orders to close it. Proximity, Ensign. Uh, approximately one and a half light years, sir. Well, set course, and I will tell the captain. Of course. So lay up to captain. Captain here. Uh... We have received new orders, and I have set course for a quantum singularity, which we are intended to close. I'm on my way. Uh, I want to look over to our guest, and I'm going to say, um, uh, pardon me, but uh, it's my duty's call. Um, I will ask the medical officer on duty to inform me of you know, any updates, and I will head my way towards back towards the, uh, towards the uh, command center. Okay. Would anybody else be coming with you? Yes. At the hearing of a quantum singularity based on our previous engagement, yes. Okay. Prawl, where are you in all this? I believe I am still with the ambassador. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Is this what is in my handout? This is. But we'll see if the captain brings you into the circle. So, Captain Jensen Jennings, you arrive on the bridge, the CIC. You see the same thing projected above the uh, the t the hollow table. Captain do doesn't take you long to look at that and realize, yeah, you have a general order that applies to this. I need to take care of this. Um, Com set course towards the singularity, maximum warp. Uh, sir, we're already going 9.975. We could QSD if you uh, really wanted to get maintain, there. Maintain velocity, please. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, should I inform the ambassador? There there seems to be a note here that I please should Please inform. inform the ambassador, Tatiana, to uh, meet, meet me on the bridge. Okay. So back down at midnight, uh, Jaro and Prawl, there's a chirp at her communicator, and she says, go ahead. And then Raven says... Uh, this is Ensign Raven. You are needed on the bridge. Something about a quantum singularity. And Titania just sort of goes, very well. I will be there in a moment. Uh, gentlemen, if you will follow me, I guess I'm the star of the show right now. Of course. I'm going to uh, doo -doo -doo, and say uh, all security, all senior staff report to the bridge, please, immediately. All righty. So, Prawl, you emerge. Jaro, you emerge. And Titania emerges. And there's Titania. And as you all take your stations, uh, she sort of looks at the quantum singularity and says, yeah, that shouldn't be there. In fact, 
someone opened that. How do we close it? Well, a deflector pulse of a sufficient uh, power should do it, but we need to figure out how that showed up. Yellow alert, raise shields, and engage cloak. Okay, well, okay, so you can't shield and cloak, but you can oh. cloak. Let's yeah. cloak first. Yeah, let's just go cloak. Okay. So the um, way cloaking works is it requires a control engineering and the ship will assist you with an engine security. This is a difficulty of two. And it does require three power. Great. I'll roll for the ship. What was the ship's role again? The ship's role is a engines and a security. Do we have any momentum? You have two. Can I assist with this if my security is higher than his? Uh, he's doing a control engineering. Don't worry, Jennings. Your time will come very shortly. <laughs> unfortunately, the ship... Yeah, it doesn't look like the ship gets you anything there, unfortunately. Uh, I'd like to spend the momentum to get an extra dice here, then. Okay. Just... Is this just for cloaking? This is just for cloaking. Why? Well, mostly because it's the power draw that's important here. Um, because if if combat happens, we need to know how much power you have. So then just... my fusion reactor uh, focus will apply? Yeah, it definitely would. Excellent. Two successes, that is what you need. So... Sort of like what happened on the Defiant when the Defiant cloaked. Uh, yellow alert is happening, but at the same time, there's almost like a blue hue that sort of in intermingles with the yellow. Uh, that signifies that the Matahari has successfully cloaked. And as you all are cloaking, uh, Jennings, uh, I would like you to roll me another insight security, please. Uh, this time... Uh, you would, uh, yes, you would have a focus. For Starship Tactics? Yep. All right. And I would say nice. that the ship will assist you with a sensor's science, or sorry, a sensor's security. There we go. There we go. Is someone getting the ship? Yep. There we go. So the difficulty was a one, but you have a special ship, which means you have advanced sensor suites. So the difficulty was a zero, which means you get four momentum. All right. Nice. So Jennings, you're seeing this before anyone else, but I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna put us on this map so you can see what's going on. Uh, but uh, what appears to you in the distance, rapidly approaching. There is what is unmistakably a Hirogen vessel near the quantum singularity. And also in the area is a micro nebula and some debris, some form of asteroid field. But what's really important is the Hirogen vessel. That shouldn't be here. Nor should that quantum singularity for that matter. I will tell the captain post haste. What can you tell us about uh, the Sorogen vessel? Are there uh, shields up? Are they armed? And and then I want to ask uh, intelligence what they can tell me about the like the Herogens. Okay. Uh, so Jennings, if you give me a momentum, I will answer one question. Sure. So which is your one question you would like answered? Was that? I thought it was the captain. Well, it, it's you that's asking the question, so. Oh, I want to look at the, the Herogen ship, find out what's going on with that. Okay. So, what you are uh, able to tell is that they do have weapons powered. They appear to have some form of a Tetrion beam array that is active. And they are bombarding the quantum singularity with exotic particles to make it larger. 
Okay. I am going to look to Tatiana and I'm going to ask her what she knows about the Herogens. Like out of character, I don't know who the Herogens are off the top of my head. So So uh Tatiana sort of sighs and says, Well, from what I know, the Herogen are a species from the Delta Quadrant. They are uh ritualistic hunters, if I had to qualify them. They have hunted my kind before. And I'm assuming that based on that, motioning at the scene on the hollow viewer, they're doing it again. Open a um uh Open a channel, um, broadcasting on all frequencies. Herogen Vessel, this is the Captain Majovan of the USS Matahari. Please cease and assist all actions to open the quantum singularity uh, and return um, to your home planet. Or something along those lines. That sounded dumb. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. We'll take <laughs> I don't what we can get. Cease and desist. Cease and desist, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what appears on the screen is a Herogen, and I will very briefly put us back in the CIC so you can see what a Herogen looks like. Uh, but for anyone who, again, can't see the screen, uh, if you will imagine, again, humanoid, uh, sort of bumpy forehead, uh, but all of it is obscured by a large mask, almost like this helmet that leaves their eyes and some of their cheekbones, uh, open to the air. And uh, what they say is, you have no claim here, Starfleet. Our hunt shall continue. I would like to attempt a, like a diplomacy sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I would like to invoke my, what was it called? Diffuse the tension. Diffuse the tension. That's the one. Yes. I would like to attempt to diffuse the tension. Okay. And make them not mad. <laughs> All right. So that's going to require a presence and command. Okay. Because you have diffused the tension, it was going to be a difficulty five. It is now a difficulty of four. Can I use my value reason outweighs the phaser? You can. And I'm assuming you are doing the two free successes. That would be amazing. Okay. If I can. And what do I need to roll? Uh, You're rolling a presence command. Presence. But I will spend some threat here in that uh, basically if you don't get a success, it's a complication. Yikes. Can I spend a momentum? Uh, you would have to spend two momentum to get oh. your third die. All right. Well, is everybody okay if I do that? Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What a time to be alive. <laughs> uh, that's three dice then? Three dice, yep. Excellent. <laughs> Did I do a thing? Uh, oh, focus. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I was all excited and it didn't wow. work. Oh, there we go. Nice. <laughs> yes. That is seven. Erosion vessel. I love um, it. From what I know of your species, the hunt is something that is done when the prey is worthy. This quantum singularity is not a worthy opponent. Your expertise could be used elsewhere. And the, the Herogen sort of looks at you, eyes narrowing. I'm trying. <laughs> no, you're trying, and I love it, but the Herogen doesn't know. care. <laughs> the Herogen looks at you and says, we're not hunting the singularity. We are hunting what's on the other side. Two of our vessels have already gone through. And Titiana says, um, Captain, we need to apparently now deal with two more vessels. Excellent. Great. Um, science, how do we close the singularity? I know Tatiana said like a uh, like a shield pulse or a, uh, a deflector. deflector. Deflector pulse. Well, I have to say, if we, close it, if we close it now, are we throwing whoever is on the other side to the wolves with the erosion vessels that are already out there also reminder that we are cloaked so in order to use the deflector dish we would need to uncloak mm -hmm. true which, which would give our position away mm -hmm. i i would rather try and get this herogen vessel out of the way so that we could try and help 
whoever the other ones are hunting. I think if we close it now, we're just trapping, um, we're trapping the quote unquote prey out there with the other two perogens. Oh boy. Hard call, but it, I, I just don't feel good about abandoning them. I look over at Tatiana. I give her a curt nod. Mm -hmm. Bring us out of cloak and raise shields. All Red right. alert. And as the ship uncloaks and Red Alert begins blaring across the entire ship, we're going to take our break. So uh, <laughs> we will be back in 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around. <sighs>
we are back from break. Uh, yeah, we need to fix the webcams real quick before we continue. Uh, so you guys know the drill. Everybody but the captain, turn yours off. And then uh, Mr. Jaro, please. Then Mr. Jennings. And then Mr. Prawl. Then Mr. Jensen. And finally, Mr. Tulip. Hey, everybody's where they should be. And welcome back, everyone, from our break. Uh, if you are just now tuning in, uh, you're about to see some starship combat between uh, Clips class cruiser and a uh, Herogen Venerator, or Venetic, I believe it is called. You're about to watch the captain get everybody killed. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> captain, I'm a much better engineer than that. <laughs> I like you. I like you, Tolop. You're a good man. You're a good, or a good creature person. All right, kidding. so All right. <laughs> a few things I wanted to point out on stream. Uh, so as you can see, the battlefield is separated out into hexes. Now, every single hex is one unit or should be one unit. So if you use the arrow tool, you should be able to measure how many units you are away from something. Um, what that's important for is if you look at the top right of the map, there's a, there's a range meter that says so-and-so units is close range, so-and-so units is medium, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Certain tasks require certain ranges. So for example, uh, if you were to use a helm action, um, depending on what helm action you choose, you would move a certain range. Um, so right now you guys are, are technically at extreme range with the Herogen Venetic with the singularity on the other side of it. Um, it is your turn to act first, and my question is, what is your what is your call here? You have just dropped out a cloak. You have raised shields. Your weapons are powered. What is it you would like to do? When I was looking over the ship earlier, did I just do I just know that there was a ship there, or was I was that a, a scan? That was you know there's a ship there. Okay, then we need to scan this. Okay. Uh, are you attempting simply to uh, get more information on the the craft, or are you actually attempting to maybe say scan for weakness? Um, well, it depends on what our advanced sensor suites entail. Can I do the? I mean, I, I mean, feel like one and then the other. It's mostly a, a it's a, a chicken before the egg thing, so it's just picking whichever one you want to do first. But it does matter um, because a, a scan task. Uh, does require a certain range. Uh, specifically for scan for weakness, if I remember correctly, and my PDF would cooperate, um, I believe it requires either close or medium range. Is this something that can be done while we were in cloak? Possibly. Yeah, me and the captain <laughs> are going to have a chat later. <laughs> no, give me a break. I don't know what I'm doing. Come on. Uh, I'm brand I new mean, to command. Oh I'm give brand new to role playing. Come on. Come on. How do you role play? I don't understand it. I'm <laughs> I love it. All right. So, to answer your question, or the question I was posing to myself so, a scan for weakness is a control and a science, and the ship assists with a sensor's security. It starts at a difficulty of one if you're at close range. It goes up to difficulty two at medium, difficulty three at, lar at, at long range, difficulty four at extreme range. You have advanced sensors, so at your current range, that is a difficulty three task. It's kind of risky this long out. I do have sensor operations too, so... I say give it a shot. You know, what's the worst thing that happens? We don't get any information and we close, you know? Mm -hmm. But if we're going to close either way, Captain, why would we waste our sensor sweep from far? I don't know. I'm trying my best here. This is all new to me. <laughs> what do you want from me? I'm the captain. <laughs> do something. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I would say um, bring us in. Bring us in the closer range first is my first command. Uh, bring us in. Our shields are up, right? Your shields are up. Yes. Shields are up. Let's bring us into closer range. I want to get a scan of their vessel. Okay. Um, my goal here is not to destroy them, but we definitely need to disable them. Okay. Um, so that they can stop opening the singularity. <laughs> okay. Uh, so my question is: uh, Do you want to move medium range, long range, further? Are we extreme right now? 
You are at extreme right now, yes. I'd like to bring us into medium range. Okay. That's my command. So Engage. I believe if... Yeah, if you were to go to medium range, uh, that would work, yes. So Raven says, bringing us closer, sir. And if someone could grab Raven, uh, they are rolling a control and a con. And right. the ship will assist with an engine's con. This is a difficulty I'll, of zero. I'll do the ship. Okay. So this is basically free momentum. This is this is Raven showing off. Oh, Raven. So... That's right. She was a control what? Uh, she is a control and a con. All right. So no help from the ship. The ship, unfortunately. And does she? This is Starship Helm operations. She's got to focus. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so you do get one momentum. So Raven brings the Matahari closer, and directly off your starboard side, there is that asteroid field I talked about. But what's really important is the fact that the Venetic, the Herogen Venetic, is not very happy with you and is actually going to do its own scan for weakness. So I'm going to push this button. And we're going to see what we get. So, Jennings, you are able to tell that they have scanned you rather intensely. And... Dun, dun, dun. But it is now your guys' turn again. Science, give, give us a scan of their ship. I want to know if they have any weaknesses. I'll focus on their weapon system. I'd like to try to disable them. Okay. So I'll perform a scan for weaknesses. Yep. So you again are doing a control and a science. Uh, this is going to be assisted by the ship's sensor security. Difficulty overall, I believe, is a one. And sensor operations will apply. Oh, yeah. All right. Plus the ship. Well, I got two successes myself. All right. So that's already one momentum. What a guy. And another momentum. Very yes, nice. Let's go. So you are able to actually tell that their port side array of uh, shield generators, the frequency is off. As in, it is not properly calibrated to form a bubble. Because the shield is basically a bubble around the ship. And that bubble is not strengthened where it should be, if that makes any sense. So you think if you hit them on the port side, you might get some extra damage in. Good news, we're, we're heading towards their port side. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now, the problem with all this is that it's now the Herogen's turn again, and they have hmm. already scanned you for the scanned you for a weakness. Can we not spend two momentum to maintain you our can. priority in the action? You can, unless do you, does anybody have quick to action? No, not I. Okay, then yes, it would be two momentum to retain the initiative, and one other person could act before the Herogen. Do it. Yes. I would say yes. Okay, so who is acting next? Can I act, use my ability to assist someone else, and have uh, weapons fire, like security fire? So weapons. you would be directing Jennings to fire? Yes, I'd be directing Jennings, fire on their port side target their weapon systems well, this is two attacks then he gets it hits his and mine basically uh what it is is this does not take up your action so you still get an action in this turn order mm -hmm. um it's just that this is almost like he is giving you a chance to act twice kind of a thing um oh. so let's break it down so jennings you're gonna be rolling me a control and a security the ship would assist you with a weapon security. The difficulty on this would be a two. And this would require one power. And I assume I definitely have a phase, uh, focus on this. Oh, yeah, you definitely do. Can I spend a determination to assist? Uh, no, you are. If you are directing him, um, you are assisting with a presence command. Okay. But the benefits of you assisting, because you have advisor, do you not? I do. What it means is that if he rolls a complication or doesn't get enough successes, he can re-roll 1d20. Boomski. Done. Let's make it happen. So I already see a success from the ship. Yep. Two successes from Jennings. Let's get that assist from the captain. 
Can you re-roll the... Oh, I'm, I'm still rolling. I'm yep, rolling, presence rolling presence and command. what? Presence command, okay. And Jennings, Good. if you want to re-roll that zero, you can. You should. Doesn't cost anything? No, free. Do you ever... Would I have a focus? You would, yeah. All right. Boom. So just, just the 1d20 this time? Yes, just the 1. And yeah, for the captain, we'll take that 0. So the captain doesn't really assist you. Oh, I was supposed to roll 1. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, but Jennings, uh, you have 4 successes. So that's 2 momentum for you. All right, all right, um, so what I would it. say is that now you get to push the shiny button that says uh, Matahari phasers. And we all get to hear a sound effect, hopefully. Yay. Let's go! Six! Yes! Right. That's what I'm talking about. So, uh, the way things work is that a ship has innate resistance. There's the sound effect. It, it is coming. <laughs> um... But basically, a ship has resistance equal to its scale. Now, the Venetic is the same scale as you, a scale 5, which means it has 5 resistance. So before anything else, it's currently only taking 1 damage at the moment. But this is where your weapon choice comes into play, along with scan for weakness. So because you scanned for weakness you basically get to ignore two points of ex of resistance for every effect that you rolled. And you rolled three effects. So you just completely ignore those resistance. So you hit them straight on. So you're already doing six damage. What were the three? Uh, the three effects. If you mouse over the six, it shows you the uh, what you've rolled. And every single effect is two resistance off. Okay. So it was a good combo. Um, now, because you're firing phasers, you have the unique ability to spend two free momentum, as in not part of your current total. You have two free momentum to spend on extra damage, to spend on uh, making it hit more systems, things of that nature. And I think there is a reference handout... Uh, should be under combat momentum spends. Ooh. Yeah, I was studying this earlier. So many options. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so potentially, you could spend one of this uh, free momentum to reroll those zeros and do even more damage. So he could create an obstacle and like bonus damage or something. He could, yes. There's so many options. Let's see what he does. <laughs> <laughs> Is this me to decide? Yeah, yep. it's yeah. on you. Oh. oh, snap. Okay. I was, for, <laughs> I was waiting for feedback, but never mind. I'm on it. <laughs> um, them down. Like, I don't want to, like, uh, how do I say this? I don't want to blow them out of the like, air just yet. Okay. Like, is there a, a, a risk to that? Uh, I no, there's definitely not a way for you to blow them completely out of the water. Um, one breach will not cause them to explode. Can he destroy their weapon systems or, like, disable them? He can temporarily disable them, yes. What's the, What do they do in the, uh, the, uh, the thingy again? Uh, they, um, they are bombarding the quantum singularity with an energy pulse from their deflector. Can I take the deflector? Is that an option here I can use to uh, shut that down? I will say if you spend one momentum, one of that free momentum, you yep. can specifically stop that beam. That still leaves you with one extra momentum to spend. Knock out their weapons! Uh, so I'd like to take the deflector out and... Weapons sounds sounds good to me, if that's an option. If, if I can do both. If I mean, if not, I'll just go for weapons. Um, I would say it would be later. a choice. You would either have to do the weapons or the deflector dish. Right, I'll do weapons then, and we'll just deflector it later. Okay. Yeah. So, I think you still have the one then. Yeah, you still have the one momentum to spend. Okay. Uh, let's do that. So, it's control again and security? Uh, oh. No. So, you have the one momentum that you could spend on... 
say doing power loss, rerolling Bonus damage. damage. Yeah. Rerolling previous damage, or this is counting for the next one? This is all the same roll. And this this is the most complicated part of the entire system. So if this is losing people, don't worry. It's complicated for a reason. What do you guys think? I would just do some extra I damage. Do you me. Your zeros off of the damage. Do Say that know? again? Sounds good to me. Uh, re-rolling our zeros on the damage. Yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm feeling. Okay. All right. You could even gain like a bonus or something from it, maybe. Mm-hmm. So it looks like you've got uh, three zeros. So if you just want to do uh, three challenge dice, we'll see if that gets you anything extra. Where do you get I the challenge dice yeah. in bar? So just hit the challenge dice three times or something like that? Uh, you click the challenge dice macro. It's going to ask you how many dice to roll. You're going to put in three. Oh, I see. All right, so another two damage. No, so sad. you fire out, and from the uh, saucer section of the Matahari, a phaser shot lances out, hits the Venetic uh, on the port side, and uh, temporarily disrupts some of the power to the deflector. I think we decided on the deflector, yes? Weapons. Yeah. Weapons. weapons. It was weapons, weapons, yeah. Okay, temporarily disrupts their weapons, and you take their shields down to a quarter. So you've taken off 75% of their shielding. Dang. Nice hit. Well done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, unfortunately, it's their turn to do it to you. So they're going to open fire with their weapons. We can't just keep throwing momentum at this and just keep hammering them. But wait, didn't we just knock out their weapon system? Correct. So there's there's an order of operations here. So you can only retain the initiative once per round. So you've okay. already done that. Okay. Um, so what the Herogen do on their turn, and I probably should have explained this a little bit more, which I apologize for. Um, during your turn in any combat, you have a minor and a regular action. And what's important to know is your minor can be used for, say, restoring systems or moving about the ship, um, that's a minor action. Like, you can just literally go from the stern of the vessel down to the bow. Did I do that right? Basically, the front of the ship to the back of the ship, all it takes is a minor. Or if your weapons are disabled, it takes you a minor to get them back up and running. Um, so that's what the Herogen do with their minor, is they get their weapons back up. Mm. For their actual action, they open fire. So let's see what happens. I'm scared. <laughs> I think for dramatic tension, I will add two dice to their roll. So let's see what happens. All right. So that is a grand total of five successes. Jesus. And they are hitting you with their own uh, phaser array. And they have a scan for weakness on you. So this is a problem. So, unfortunately... When they fire their phasers, they not only pierce through and deal 8 damage to your shielding, but they also cause a breach. Because remember, 5 is the magic number. If you do 5 or more damage with a single attack, special things happen. So let's see where they hit you. They have hit you in your engines. Oh, damn. And what that means is power across the entire ship flickers and goes out. And conceptually, what this means is you immediately lose two power. Oof. And until someone says that they are taking the restore minor action, your engines are essentially offline. Oh, God. <laughs> But as you can image see, report so, uh, so our shields come into play here so because they had a sensor lock they ignored our shield correct yes they basically did the same thing you did to them yeah okay but yeah after this uh phaser fire opens up a uh, power leak on let's say your top left nacelle it does come back around to the player's turn Damage report! Engineering! <laughs> uh, Captain, we appear to have taken damage to our engines. Can you restore them? <clears throat> Aye, Captain. 
I will. I'll take the minor action of restore systems. Okay. And then I'd like to take the regenerate shields action. All right, go for it. I believe that is a control and a engineering, and the ship will assist you with a structure engineering. The difficulty is only a one. It does require one power. Uh, does my fusion reactor focus help? It would. There we Two go. Two successes, which means you get one momentum. Let's see if the ship gets you any more. Come on, ship. Oh, right. Uh, what is I the ship rolling? Uh, ship is structure engineering. Right. Structure engineering. Hey, look at that. Ship gets you another two momentum. Very nice. Damn. Oh, nice. Uh, so what that means is you immediately gain uh, two shield. So you're up at six shield now. Uh, also, that is the blue bar that you're seeing on the token. Um, so I believe you're at six. And you can spend, because uh, you're at what now? You're at... No, really? How much momentum nine. do you have? Nine? We're at, we're at nine. Yeah, we can't nine. keep nine. Yeah, I was so all say, three of those momentum. No, all three of them because we can't have more than six. Mm -hmm. So all three of the momentum I just gained. We should spend to go again. Well, we can't. To we get already did that this round. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Uh, but yeah, for that three momentum, uh, you essentially get six more shielding. So your shields just go back up to full. Hell yeah. Nice. Well done, Commander Tola. Thank you, Captain. All right. Now it is the Herogen's turn again. And they are going to do something you're not going to like. They are actually going to bombard the Quantum Singularity with a more intensified beam. I knew it. So let's, hmm. uh, let's roll the dice here. They've acquired enough successes. So the Singularity... Doesn't double in size, doesn't triple in size. It quadruples in size. Oh, dear God. Huh. Well, crap. And Raven shouts uh, from the helm, Sir, they're, they're attempting to drag us in with them. This is one of those <sighs> I told you so moments. <laughs> but it is the player's turn again. Fire photons. <laughs> Fire all weapons. <laughs> I'm done. I tried to be nice. All right. So, uh, Jennings, it is your time to shine again. So, torpedoes are important for several reasons. Uh, not only are they the sort of thing that does lead to ships exploding, uh, but just to fire them, you have to give me a point of threat. You actually yelled that out like we're actually firing all this stuff. Yes, absolutely. 100% fire all weapons. Bring them down. Can I pause for a second? What is the difference like for an attack versus the struggle, structural integrity drain? Is that actually considered an attack? It's like it is, yes. Other. And I was waiting to see if anybody had read the handout. Sort of did a sneaky on you um, to see if anybody was reading. No, I've been waiting on that one, but people keep... Okay. Um, can I, so is that different than the shields? The so what that is, is uh, for your attack... Uh, what that would mean is the target ship's resistance goes down by one, and your resistance goes up by one. Okay. Mm. So we'll say that part of the this whole process is Jennings, you lock on a subnucleonic beam and drain away some of their structural integrity and use it to reinforce the Mataharis. Damn. What's our structural integrity? Although, where are we at right now? We're not full, I assume. Five. Yeah, so you were at five. You now have a effective resistance of six. Nice. And they have a resistance of four. So we're already up. Mm -hmm. That would be if you use that system. Oh, if I used it. Mm -hmm. Right, and that would that be his whole turn? Uh, no, just tell me you're using it. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll ask the captain. Captain, here's my suggestion. Yes, engage system. <laughs> Done. Hmm. So what the captain you... pretends like he didn't forget that existed. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's a learning experience all around. But uh, what is your actual action, Mr. Jennings? I would like to use a structural integrity drain. 
Okay. Well, that that's a free action. That doesn't actually take your action. Oh, oh. okay. That's Damn. that's why it's so powerful. Is it doesn't require an action to do so. Oh dang. Uh, then I would like to fire with the captain's permission on the deflectors of the enemy ship. Permission take, granted. Take the fire. Out. Okay. So if you're firing phasers, that's going to be a uh, control security difficulty of two, assisted by the ship's weapon security. Mm-hmm. If you fire torpedoes, that's a difficulty of three, and you give me one threat. If you fire a torpedo salvo, that is three threat, still at a difficulty of three, but you get an additional challenge die, and I believe, because I'm trying to remind myself, uh, you also get a special effect, which is basically they're going to go pew, pew, boom kind of a thing. Captain, permission to go big or go home? Uh, fire, fire, fire a full salvo. All right. So I will take the three threat. <laughs> permission to go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> go big. <laughs> That's legit. Yes. We're here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> All right. hey, we tried diplomacy. It didn't work. You know, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I tried. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so for dramatic tension, uh, I'm going to spend my remaining threat, including the threat you just gave me. Mr. Jennings, this is going to be a difficulty five task. Good news. We have a fuck ton of momentum. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Yeah, I was going to say, take it. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Make it happen. <laughs> what do I roll? You're rolling a control security. The yep. ship is assisting you with a weapon security. How okay. much momentum can we spend? You can spend all six of it to get five total dice for Mr. Jennings. All of it. Do all of it. <laughs> I, I assume my focus of search. Everybody with still me. Comes in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it definitely comes into play. Go big or go home. <laughs> Take it all. Let's Oof. get after it. Ooh, okay. That is unfortunate. <laughs> so, so let's let's break this down. So you have four successes right now. That's not enough to hit determination. The you can use determination to Spend reroll the determination. those two zeros. Yes, do it. Come on, let's go. All right. You got this. You got this. I so just two. Uh, it's as, you technically can reroll as many dice as you so wish. So more than two. Well, but if you roll more than two, then we're risking our already Just spend the two. Just spend the two. Just do the two. Mm -hmm. Go big or go home or go medium and go home? Just spend the two. Oh, well. Uh, Mm. We've already gone medium. Just re-roll the two so we can go big. Are you using a focus on this? Yeah. Okay. Just do the two because you just just need one success. All right, Captain. Oh, there it is. Yes. (laughs) We get three momentum back. Nice. Good shot, Commander. So uh, that uh, Lieutenant, that, I don't know. I'm just Lieutenant Commander. Yeah. Lieutenant Thanks for the promotion. Commander. I just got a promotion. That's awesome. <laughs> You're getting promoted for that solo. <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's go. All right. So that is a total of eight successes. <laughs> so that is the current record on the Mata Hari. Uh, I believe the number to beat is Fenrir had 11 at one point. So oh, just yeah, keep that in mind. Um, but anyway, so the Mata Hari disgorges a cornucopia of torpedoes. Now I'm going to ask a very important question, Mr. Jennings. Were you firing regular photons or were you firing quantums? Oh, did you ask me that now? (laughs) (laughs) We went bigger, went home. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I spread the love and just like a little from column A, a little from column B. Yeah, sure. (laughs) So now you get to push the shiny torpedoes button. Woo! All right. (laughs) So excited. And the sound effect will come in at a dramatically appropriate moment. But there it is. Uh, So quantums are important because for every effect you roll, you essentially do one more damage. So you have one, two, three, four, five effects for a grand total of 12 damage with your quantums. So what happens? The Matahuri disgorges a... Just a, a barrage of regular torpedoes, quantums, just everything is going full bore at the Herogen vessel. And at first, you know, the Herogen vessel takes one torpedo, two torpedoes. You know, it looks like maybe it'll get well. And then the whole, like, barrage hits them. And they are hit by so many breaches that their vessel 
just begins to buckle at the seams and starts breaking apart. And as it starts to list, another quantum hits its center mass and it explodes in a radiant display of energy. And you guys are effectively out of combat. You pretty much two shot a Herogen vessel. Ah, well yeah. done, <laughs> Lieutenant Commander. Well done. Scan Captain, for... recommend scan we for cloak and head into the quantum singularity. Uh, uh, lower shields, um, uh, engage cloak. So I'm not going to require a uh, a roll here unless you guys really want to try for momentum. I'll let that be at your discretion. Do it. Try for the momentum. Do we have a we have, is there like a listed finite amount of torpedoes or no no nah, no we're not doing Voyager rules where we actually have to keep track of torpedoes. <laughs> okay. But yeah, uh, if you guys want to try for momentum, it would be a control engineering uh, assisted by the ship's engine security difficulty of two. I do think it. we should just take the freebie. No, do it! <laughs> this is a role-playing game. We must roll dice. Very much about taking the freebie. You've misspelled the role there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys tell me. Are you going for it or are you going to take the freebie? Roll. 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 I mean, the roll. captain says roll. Captain says roll. I'll yeah. apply my fusion reactor focus. Hey, before you do it, do a shoulder dance. See? Hey. See? Right. That's already what one. The, uh, the ship is engine security. What do we need to do at three? Uh, difficulty of two. Oh, so we already got to let them. See? And you guys doubted me. I get your back. Okay, so just the uh, three successes, but you do cloak. And when you head through the singularity, uh, it's like going through a wormhole. There's a momentary moment where you are in the singularity itself. And then you pop out somewhere very strange. Uh, more specifically, you pop out in fluidic space. Now, if you're not familiar with fluidic space, uh, it is essentially a literal dimension that is filled with gases and liquid. There are no stars. There are no planets. It's just this liquid form that permeates the entire existence of this plane. And the good news is that since you came in under cloak, uh, I'm going to give this to you guys for free. You see that at extreme range from you, there are two more Herogen vessels that are harrying a disabled 8472 bio ship. Not cool, bro. Not cool. Not cool. No, I'm not, I'm not okay with this. I mean, technically one of those Herogen vessels is only long range from us. This is true. Yeah, I'm not okay with this. Uh, bring us into uh, close range. We're going to open up with a full salvo on both ships. Uh, we want to scan them first? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Say, we scan them, yeah, of yeah, course. We we bring them in, scan. They don't know we're here. Come on. Yeah. I'm a little overzealous. I'm sorry. It's fine. It happens to the best of us. But yeah. A diplomatic captain taken by battle fever. Just yeah. kill everyone. <laughs> Shoot everything. <laughs> I thought your people were peaceful. No, he's the, he's the punisher. He's hey, well, they are. Except when they mess with my friends. I love <laughs> it. Complete strangers as well. I like hate when people mess with my complete strangers. All right. I'm also, I'm also most of the way through a bottle of wine, so <laughs> bear with me. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> this is probably semantics, but didn't we promote that last fight and then murder an entire ship? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Starfleet. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows you're wrong if they're gone. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> Wow. Well, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you were basically assisting your new ally. So I I uh, think it's just diplomatic fun. immunity. Yeah. I, got, <laughs> isn't that how that works? There's a diplomat on this board. This isn't a right? weapon. Yeah. I tried diplomacy. They told us to go F ourselves. What do you want from me? Yeah, but we could have just disabled them. We didn't have to. Blown yeah. the kingdom come. I tried that. <laughs> okay. You take responsibility for our choices, right? Oh, yeah. We decided to murder. All right. Well, yeah. I'm looking at the time here, and I think we can maybe get through this combat, but we would be pushing our time. So let me ask my players this. I know it would be a cliffhanger, but would you guys want to take uh, the next two weeks to basically figure out how you're going to take on two ships at once 
Uh, or would you like to push and see if we can get this done in, quote unquote, our allotted time slot? I'm cool so, with either. No chit chat, just straight dice roll. Um, well, I'm enjoying us? myself, so I'd say balls to the walls. Let's do this. Yeah, me too. I'm, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm on board. Okay, let's good. Get after it. Then uh, let's see what happens. We might be running late, but let's see what happens. So let's uh, let's decide order of operations here. So you are currently under cloak. Are mm -hmm. you getting closer than scanning? Are you getting yes. closer than opening fire? What is the order of operations here? Bring us within to medium range, and let's give um, both ships a scan for weaknesses. Or if we have to do one, then the other. Yeah, you would have to do one, then the other. Do one, Closest then the one other. first. Yeah. yeah, correct. Okay. So Raven will move you in. And again, that's going to be a control and a science. Okay. And that will be assisted by the ship's sensor security. The difficulty is one. Okay. But control. I will be nice and say that if you give me two momentum, I will let your scan for weakness affect both vessels. Done. Worth it. It's yeah, tempting. 100%. Yeah. I agree, first officer. Totally worth it. Difficulty of one? Difficulty of one. All right. Oh, sign. Raven rolled zero. Oh, okay. And the ship is rolling... Uh, the ship is rolling sensors and security. So, oh, nice. All right, so that's already three successes. So that's already two momentum. Three, two momentum back. And yeah, there you go. Yes. And another hey! momentum from the Matahari. Oh, nice. oh, oh, oh. Actually, what a time to be we alive. We actually netted a momentum off of that. That's what nice. a time to be alive. Mm -hmm. So uh, the good news for you guys is that you have identified more weaknesses within the Herogen Venetics. And uh, they don't really know you're here, uh, which is both a good and a bad thing. It's good because they're not going to be able to shoot at you because they don't know where you are. The bad news is they're going to shoot the bio ship some more. So let's see what they roll. So this is for Venetic A. Can we shoot while cloaked? Uh, no. no, you have to decloak. Oh, there was a whole movie about that. I was going to say, I didn't think we could. <laughs> I was pretty sure we couldn't, but... You know, uh, a captain can dream. Let's see. So they do hit the bio ship. They do a significant amount of damage. Yikes. Uh, Herogen Venetic B rolls Oof. a complication, but Acting. still enough successes to succeed. So what I'm going to say here is that the bio ship uh, takes a barrage of phaser fire and torpedoes. And... You don't have to run a sensor scan. You can just look at the bio ship. It's probably got two hits left in it, and you're not going to have a bio ship anymore. You're going to have space debris. I'm not okay with this. So we uncloak right between yeah. them, lay out a double barrage to both sides. Correct. And then end I... up ahead of them. Yes, 100%. We can, only, we can only shoot one ship at a time, right? Uh, yes, that is actually... Is different... Uh, very important because they are within one unit of each other. Okay. So if you spend, I believe it is a two momentum spend, you could confer the area effect to a torpedo spread or a phaser spread. For uh, dramatic tension, mm -hmm. I'd like to command us to put ourselves in between the bio ship and them to mm -hmm. protect it. Because that feels dramatic. So I'm going to... if we uncloak uh, while doing that. Exactly. Well, I want us to swing around. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk with uh, our helm officer. Um, how much yeah. does that cost? Yeah. So you basically say, go like that then. Bring us around. Position us between us and the bow ship. Decloak and raise shields. Will they have fired by the time we get all the way over there? Here's what I would... Here, here's the thing. Here's what I would suggest. Rather than doing that, we use the element of surprise to decloak and fire on the, both their weapon systems. That's fair. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I agree. I'm yeah. with that. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, create advantage. How does that work? Uh, you literally tell me what you're trying to do, and we figure out a way to make that happen. And as intelligence, don't I get a free one? You do. You can literally create an advantage for free. So... What I would say is an example, and this is probably a good one to take. Based on what you have scanned in that last fight, maybe you know the Herogen shield frequency. Which means you just ignore their shields completely. Well, that's oh! handy. 
Oh my God. That was so I am going, I'm going to go ahead and enter that frequency into our main computer. Okay. So what I'm going to say is that this advantage is going to last for one attack. Because after they figure out they have your free, you have their frequency, they're going to change the frequency. So you have one attack before their resistance comes back. Permission to commence bloodbath, Captain? <laughs> full salvo. <laughs> Decloak. Decloak, uh, full salvo. <laughs> okay. Since this and the, and the two momentum spent. The, could I have it be like, could I assist him? Like it was a direct action? Yeah, you could direct him. Well. So let's break it down. So Jaro is directing Jennings to full salvo. Right. So Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna roll presence command, right? Correct. And he's gonna get a re-roll of one dice because I have the advisor. Correct. Now. So Jennings, this is again a control security. Got it. The ship is assisting with a weapon security. We are spending those two momentum for the area of effect, too, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yes. How many dice? I spent one. How many dice? Five. How many can we spend to roll more dice? Uh, You have four at the moment. So Uh, we can spend three to get two extra dice. mm -hmm. Do it. That's it. Do it. Uh, So I'll just roll four and then two? Yeah. Oof. Okay, so that is four successes right now. So you are getting four successes. Okay. Uh, you can reroll one of those zeros. And then if someone can get the ship, someone's got the ship. So that is already uh, five successes. So I had two left over, so make it three with the reroll? Uh, no, it would be just one reroll from advisor. But I thought I had six. That was, but that was, I, that was determination that we used to spend. Yeah, that was determination. To reroll your zeros last time. Can I give him my determination as the captain? You can. That is literally your special thing to do. Oh, I thought I thought I I had five rolls, and I just cut it down to four because it doesn't allow you to six or something. Oh, sorry. I thought I thought I I had six, but it only allows you to pick five. So I just did four with two. I'm going to give you my determination. Take it. You can't roll six dice on a thing. Five. Yeah, five is the limit. Oh, it stops at five. Mm -hmm. Oh, take it. But if the captain does give you his determination, it's yours. All right, so that is a grand total of I can math today. That is seven successes. Right. So uh, that is more than sufficient. You get four momentum. So I believe you are at four now. Yes. Um. And, so now um, we do the very important damage roll. To confirm, uh, I I was directing to specifically attack the weapon systems. Okay. Yes. That's we can do without an extra difficulty because of. One of Matahari's talents. Yep, with fast targeting systems, you can just target a subsystem without an additional increase in difficulty. Mm-hmm. Nice. But yeah, let's uh, let's see that torpedo roll and see what happens. Oh! Ooh, very nice. Damn! So that is one, two, three effects. So that is ten damage. So, I'm... narratively... What happens? Matahari uncloaks, does a Klingon attack run, and just disgorges a volley of torpedoes right into the middle of the Herosian craft. And the explosion that results uh, rocks through their shields as if they were not even there and completely disables not only their weapons, but their engines as well. They yeah. are still intact. But they are essentially out of combat. Open so I twist the, twist the knife, Captain? Okay. No, open the channel. And uh, Raven reports channel open, sir. Erosion vessels, stand down or you will be destroyed. Um, and then I'll close channel. And then I'm going to make our way towards the disabled uh, uh, ship. And I want to see if we can offer assistance and then raise it, uh, open a channel to the. Uh, Species 8457. Wait, what was it again? 8472. That's what I said. 8472. Open a channel to species 8472. Um, this is the captain of the USS Montahari. Uh, We're uh, making our way towards your vessel to offer assistance in any way that we can. Okay. So the uh, bio ship doesn't reply to your hail, but your ambassador, Titania, says, They heard you, captain. 
Uh, they are very grateful for the assistance. However, they are requesting that we leave the Herogen where they are. Understood. And what I would do say... They, do they why? require any assistance? And Titania sort of looks off at the end of the distance on the, in the CIC, and she says, No, it seems that we've arrived at the fortuitous time. And as the uh, Matahuri moves in to help the bioship, uh, Jensen, you're detecting a lot of bioships headed in your direction. Like, Whoa. probably on the order of 10 to 12. Whoa. So I'll relay that to the captain. Uh, yeah. I think they've got all the assistance they need coming in, sure. Take us back through the singularity um, as quickly as you can. And we're going to get on the other side of the singularity and then we're going to close it. We don't want to kill all of them. No. No. Yeah. There are allies. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just goading our captain. I'm just completely... <laughs> Full salvo on the bio ships now. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, we don't want to go through that. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, no, they, are, they are monsters in combat. But yeah, uh, actually, this wrapped up far faster than I thought. Like I said, if you guys roll well, combat goes over instantly. Yes. But it can yeah. drag on. So... Mm -hmm. Narratively, what MVP, happened? MVP security officer, if I may be so bold as to say. Yeah. Like, well played, sir. <laughs> that was awesome. Definitely. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, essentially what happens is uh, you guys head back through the singularity. You close it, no problem. And the fate of the Herogen is probably not pleasant for them. But uh, that is sort of the end of our session. They made uh, their choice. What did you guys think? I mean, that was sort of your first taste of combat. Did you like it? Did you hate it? You know, it's, I, it's I dynamic, it. and it feels yeah. it feels like an episode of Star Trek, like yeah. in a good way. It, it was very like right. it's quick if you make good decisions and have good roles. And mm -hmm. I want to compliment the crew on keeping the captain sane because he's <laughs> not a combatant, so he didn't really know what to do. Mm -hmm. I feel right. a little guilty about blowing up the first ship, but also YOLO. <laughs> <I Yeah>. guess. <laughs> you really just went. You went zero from zero to a hundred. You were like, yeah, yeah I was just all this this, in Starfleet Academy. Is YOLO one of the courses? Yes. <laughs> YOLO 101. I mean, that's, an, that's, that's an elective. Technically, technically I, took, I took it several times. We <laughs> started that fight because we just came out of cloak, revealed where we were, then put our shields up, and then they scanned us for weaknesses. So immediately we knew what they were doing. So we just uh, we did shot it first. first. Yeah, we yeah. shot first. Though. Yeah, yeah you're Han Solo. Uh, it's fine. Technically, Don't worry. My captain's law will explain it very clearly they scanned us for weaknesses and then what we did was we beat them to the punch there's we no question that's what weakness. they were going we to tried to first. disable them they no, tried to after. kill us we killed remember, them first remember the order of operations they scanned us we moved they scanned us for weaknesses then we scanned them for weaknesses and then yeah, okay. retained the initiative and fired it, it, we were technically in the right Man, that's some mental gymnastics. I'm with you. <laughs> it's legitimately the thing that happened. I will. Uh... You, you scan for weakness does not mean I'm now going to kill you. It just means I'm looking at you. Except <laughs> they specifically scanned us for weaknesses. Well, yeah. This is minority fact... report we're talking about here. Like, yeah, it's it's it... apples and oranges. I think we yeah. we both have yeah. unique viewpoints, which is what yeah. matters. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I did want to say before I cut the stream, uh, thank you so much. We had a great turnout tonight. Thank you, uh, Cobalt Army, for stopping in. <laughs> Uh, you will see these guys in two weeks. Uh, I believe that is what the 18th, no, 16th. Can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah, but oh, uh, yeah. this is where I'm going to cut the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, etc., etc. Thank you so much, and uh, live long and prosper. Stream later. <laughs>